Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen, and today we're going to talk about do you need a tax treaty, alright? Before I get started, please click the subscribe button if you have not already, click the notification bell to get notified of uh, upcoming videos, I try to put up a few a week, so anyway, let's dive into it. Okay, so I, I get this a bunch of times, uh, and it's something that I've noticed that people don't really understand tax treaties very well. So I've done some other videos where I talk a little bit about tax treaties, but here we're going to talk a little bit more about it. And here's the thing. So a lot of people will say, oh, you know, I'm moving to this country, or I'm talking about forming a business in this company, in country, etc. And they have a tax treaty, or they don't have a tax treaty. And in a bunch of these cases, I'm kind of like, well, actually, in your situation, I don't think that you really need a tax treaty. It's not really relevant. So tax treaties and in particular double tax agreements because there's different types of tax treaties so there's tax information exchange agreements and you know uh, but double tax treaties are usually what we're talking about when we're talking about this okay and here's the thing they're specifically designed to prevent double taxation so if there's no risk of double taxation then there is no concern about a tax treaty all right so let's use a specific example uh, if I'm in a situation where uh, I have a business, let's say I'm in Canada, okay, so I'm in Canada, I have a business, and I'm running my business, everything's local, and I'm selling over the internet to people from a bunch of other countries. Well, I'm not subject to tax in those other countries, so it doesn't really matter if I have a tax treaty, okay? So, no double tax, no worries. Uh, on a flip side, I may have uh, a situation where I go and I move to another country, right? And I say, okay, great, you know, I still have my country, uh, my business uh, back in Canada, and I'm abroad, and you know, but I'm not operating that business, and so there may be no tax in that particular. Now, in that particular case, I would have to worry about uh, dividend payments. But let's say there's no dividend payments, then you know, you may not have to worry about this double tax. So, it's specifically about cases where both countries would tend to tax you. That is where tax treaties are useful. Okay, and there are, I would say, generally speaking four cases where this becomes relevant. The first one is when we need to determine residency of a company uh, or an individual. So just determine residency in general. So I often tell people, hey, if you're leaving a country such as Canada, such as Australia, etc., uh, some of these countries don't have a really clear uh, set of rules for when you become not tax resident. All right? In the US, it's very simple because you're a citizen, so you're still taxable. Okay, Great. Uh, in some countries, clearly, if you don't spend uh, six months a year there, you're not resident. Okay, cool, great. But in some other cases, it's like, well, it's a matter of fact, and we're going to go and we're going to list all these things, etc. So I really wish that UK has done it well. They have something called the statutory residency test. And based on this test, you can go through and you can basically follow a flow chart to ask, were you resident or were you not resident, right? Okay, let's say that you get past that. You're like, perfect. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to figure out how it, uh, how it goes. So... Uh, so what I say is move to a place, if you have the option, moving to a place where you do have a tax treaty gives you a degree of certainty because international law trumps domestic law, okay? So in other words, that tax treaty overrides whatever the local rule is. And so you may be in a situation where you say, well, you know, I'm still maybe going to have a few ties here, etc. But the tax treaty has a uh, tiebreaker rule that says, hey, listen, so long as I have a permanent home available to me here and I don't have one here, I'm resident here. Okay, great, that, that's helpful, right? Uh, same thing with companies. Sometimes it says, hey, listen, in the event of a tiebreaker, the country where the company is resident, uh, is registered, sorry, is the place where we will consider it resident. Great, that's like, that's very helpful, right? So it gives some clarity in this sense. So if you're in a situation where you're concerned about that thing, then yes, having a tax treaty may be useful. Next, if there are dividends paid out from one country to another, then very often, not always, but very often, there are dividend withholding taxes applied. So let's look at, at cases where it, this is, might or might not be useful, okay? So if I have a company that's in the U.S. that is paying dividends out to me, then the withholding rate is much higher if I don't have a tax treaty to lower those. I can potentially, in some cases, get it as low as 5% uh, under the tax treaty, as opposed to being in a situation where, you know, I can pay 30%, right? So this difference is really, really worthwhile. Usually what happens is the rate gets cut in half. That's kind of the, the way that it goes. Not always, but you know, loosely, that's how it ends up. So very, very good, right? And this applies also to interest and to royalties, okay? But let's look at how this may not apply, right? So for instance, uh, somebody may say to me, oh, well, you know, uh, I have a Hong Kong company and I'm gonna be in this country 
and uh, it's good because there's a tax treaty with Hong Kong. Well, Hong Kong doesn't levy dividend withholdings at all. It doesn't tax the dividends. So as a result, it doesn't help you at all, right? It's like, okay, great. I mean, you know, you're not going to pay any tax, so you're not getting double taxed. Therefore, you don't have a problem. Now, you're going to be taxable in your home country, but that's going to happen regardless whether you have that tax treaty or not. So, uh, again, you know, maybe you're not taxed in your home country. That's dependent on the local rules, but at least you're subject to tax on that income, okay? So that's the next one. So uh, interest is the next example of this, right? Very often, interest plays a... Uh, plays a role because maybe you're lending money out and you're getting payments back. This one gets a little bit tricky because sometimes the tax treaty is not really that relevant. Uh, so for instance, let's look at Canada. Canada, generally speaking, doesn't levy withholdings on interest uh, unless there's uh, some kind of connected, uh, uh, what do you call it? Unless it's a situation where uh, you have uh, like a related party transaction, okay? So as a result, even though technically under the tax treaty, they can tax up to a maximum of, I think it's 15%, uh, they generally don't, so generally it doesn't matter, right? So now again, there may be a consequence for you tax-wise on the other side, that's totally different, but the tax treaty isn't going to help you in that situation, so it doesn't matter, okay? Royalties are the next one, same thing. Royalties are like a little bit trickier. Uh, I mean, I guess all three of these, you can have some situations where it can, it can work in your favor, it can play, play to you with some other rules, such as in the EU, they have the parent subsidiary directive, the royalties directive, uh, et cetera, that you know, may, may factor into this whole, whole picture. Uh, you may also have a thing with permanent establishments where the permanent establishment rules are quite clear, so you've kind of got the rules around active business and do you have a permanent establishment and how do we define a permanent establishment, things like this. But the bottom line is I think it's worth planning out and this is something that we, we take into account when we're building structures for people, is we look and we say, hey, listen, well, what is the situation under which you need a tax treaty? Like, there may be some consequences for you, and by utilizing a tax treaty, we can really help you out. On the other hand, maybe you don't need to worry about it, and very often you don't. Very often, you know, I talk to some people, and I'm like, the structure that you're proposing is just way too complicated. Like, you can streamline it down. I was talking to somebody, uh, maybe on the, I don't know, a few, three, four days ago, and he was like this. He had this structure. It was a perfectly reasonable structure, but I'm like, well, you're adding in an extra company. You're adding in extra filings. You're going to have transfer pricing. You, know, you don't need all that stuff. You can go and just streamline this down and be much, much simpler in order to get, you know, an equivalent, and actually slightly better result. You're going to save a bunch of tax, and you know, it's going to be easier for you with less maintenance costs. So anyway, uh, reach out to us if you have some questions. If you want to book a call, you can. There's a link below. Clarity.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. Please, if you like this video, click the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Check out our other videos. Visit offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. I would love to hear from you if you have ideas of other videos that you'd like to include, etc. Put them in the comments. I want to know what you have to say. And I'm going to see you guys on the next video.